care of the patients with arthritis and total joint arthroplasty. This begins on page 1001 of your Iggy text. Concepts mobility and immunity. Interrelated concepts are pain, clotting, infection, and inflammation. Osteoarthritis is the most common arthritis. If you look on page 1002, figure 46.1, Arthritis is an inflammation, also known as degenerative joint disease. So those are the same thing, okay? What happens is cartilage turns from healthy translucent blue, bluish white to an opaque yellowy brown. Cartilage and bone erode and bone spurs form. Inflammation speeds up the degeneration and the body cannot overcome it. The joint will become red, painful, and swollen and you will be able to hear crepitus um, when you touch or push on the skin you will um, actually hear it because pieces of bone and cartilage are floating in the joint etiology and genetic risk the primary concern is aging as well as genetic factors um, aging because of weight bearing joints also the hands and the spine Secondary osteoarthritis includes problems with joint injuries, obesity, and repetitive stress to joints. So if somebody has a job that is heavy manual labor, also athletes that perform the same movements all the time, um, such as football players, gym, gymnasts, and also runners. Other diseases that cause problems with osteoarthritis are diabetes, Paget's disease, and sickle cell. All of these can cause degeneration. The fifth most common cause of disability worldwide, and there are 31 million people in the United States that are affected by osteoarthritis. Health promotion and wellness, maintain proper nutrition, avoid injury, take work breaks, and stay active if you, what is it? Move it or lose it. Taking a history and an assessment of our osteoarthritis patients. You wanna know about joint pain. You wanna know the characteristics of it, um, when it started, what their age was when it started, if they have any other disease processes that may be affecting their joints. Physical assessment signs and symptoms are persistent joint pain and stiffness, crepitus, and joint effusions. The pain will be so bad that it will interfere with their quality of life. It may interfere with sex, their body image because of the joint deformities, um, and also may cause depression. Ask what life was like prior to their diagnosis. Figure 46.2 on table um, 1004, excuse me, on page 1004, will show some deformed hands there. Um, they are nodules, specifically Heberden and Bouchard nodes, the enlarged bony nodules affecting the joints of the hand. So that shows kind of a um, deformity that occurs, and it can be much worse than that. Then table 46.1 differentiates between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Our laboratory assessment, they can aspirate joint fluid. You um, may find urate crystals indicating gout. The sedimentation rate will increase with infection. The um, CRP, all of the CRP and the sedimentation rate is secondary synovitis, um, in other words, joint inflammation. An imaging assessment will show vertebrae and knee involvement, um, and that includes on x-rays and MRIs. Cues and hypotheses, persistent pain, and potential for the decreased mobility. We want to manage these patients' persistent pain and promote post-op mobility and activity. So a THA is a total hip, a TKA is a total knee. Both of them are known as arthroplasties, which means replacement. They can do a revision, which includes a resurfacing of the joint after a um, replacement is done. 
there is a drug alert you need to look at on page 1005. It talks about the COX-2 inhibiting drugs. These all can cause cardiovascular disease, such as myocardial infarction, hypertension, um, because they cause vasoconstriction and increased platelet aggregation. So you know how important all that is because we just talked about all that. Um, the drugs will decrease inflammation and pain. Typically, Tylenol is a drug of choice and also topical medications. Symptoms uh, on page 10,000, excuse me, 1,007, not 10,007, 1007. Um, you have a pre-op care and education for patients having a total hip arthroplasty. They're going to get IV antibiotics. It's going to happen under general anesthesia. Boy, don't we hope so. They can do an epidural or a nerve block, however, but they're going to make sure that patient is not feeling it. They um, may have tranexamic acid, which is an antifibrolytic, which will increase hemoglobin and hematocrit and decrease the need for blood transfusions. So that is trans tranexamic acid. That is hard to say. Okay, they are usually in the hospital three days. Um, look at, on page 1009, the older adult boxes, action alerts, and the special post-op care of the older adult with total hip arthroplasty. Okay, so we're going to um, watch them for infection. We are going to keep their heels off the bed. Be very careful to move them slowly to avoid orthostatic hypotension. Encourage them to cough and deep breathe. You guys should know that, right? Um, as soon as permitted, we're going to get them out of bed and get them mobile. Hopefully, PT is going to do that for us, right? Um, control their pain. There may be a temporary change in mental state um, right after surgery. The most, complication, most common complication for these types of surgeries is a DVT. So, of course, you know about Lovenox, the low molecular weight heparin. So, they may get Lovenox, and also they need to ambulate as soon as possible and use those compression socks or sequential compression devices, the SCDs. Okay, transitioning to home and self-care management. Um, they will have inpatient rehab before going home. For the first few weeks at home, they will need some kind of caregiver, usually. And as far as healthcare resources, there is an arthritis foundation that has some good tips on the internet that people can access. And if you look on page 1016, we have evidence-based instructions for joint protection in the box on the right, and exercises for patients with osteoarthritis on the left. So go over those. When we are evaluating our outcomes, we want to make sure that the patient has their pain under control. So we don't expect them to have no pain initially, especially, uh, but we want to keep it around a two to three and the zero to 10 scale or a pain level that is acceptable to the patient because you all know how that can be. Um, we want them to keep from getting any complications such as um, infection or something like that and we want to have them be able to function in their own environment independently with or without assistive devices so they may need a walker or a cane um, especially at first um, but we want them to be able to use as little um, assistive devices as possible Rheumatoid arthritis is chronic, progressive. It is a systemic inflammatory autoimmune process. It affects the synovial joints and is characterized by remissions and exacerbations. The um, exemplar begins on page 1017, and I would like you to look at 1018 for the key features. The patient with um, early signs, early disease, will have joint inflammation, a low-grade fever, fatigue, weakness, anorexia, and that paresthesis, which is like pins and needles. 
that feeling. Um, the later signs, the advanced disease, they will have deformities of the joints, moderate to, re to severe pain and morning stiffness. They may then go into severe fatigue, weight loss, um, peripheral neuropathy. They can even develop pericarditis, fibrotic lung disease, Jorgen syndrome, kidney disease, and Felty syndrome. Etiology is a combination of environmental and genetic factors and physical and emotional stress is linked to exacerbations of the disease. It affects one and a half million people. It's more common in Euro-Americans and women are two to three times more likely to have it than men. When you're taking your history, you want to know how severe the joint pain is. Um, is it slow and progressive or is it acute and severe? Physical assessment. The morning stiffness, when people have actual rheumatoid arthritis, the morning stiffness will last for hours. So sometimes you may get up in the morning and feel stiff, but we're not talking about, oh, you move around and you're fine or you go take a shower and you're fine. We're talking it lasts four or five hours, okay? Um, they will have generalized weakness and fatigue. Um, psychosocially, the biggest thing is their change independence, um, their change in their role in their family, um, and a lot of people fear that. They worry, you know, for instance, um, a, a mom might worry about taking care of her kids and cooking and cleaning the house and that type of thing. So there's a change in her role in the family. On page 10, 19, you will see common joint deformities in um, rheumatoid arthritis. You have the boutonniere deformity and the swan neck. Um, both of these are shown here in the, in the fingers. These are late signs and symptoms, okay? Okay, and looking at our labs, we look at rheumatoid factor. If it is present, that does not mean for sure a diagnosis of RA. The anti-CCP is a really long name um, that that stands for, but it is a marker in early and late disease. The ANA means anti-nuclear antibody. If the blood is positive for the ANA, then they will look at more antibodies to measure those. If the sedimentation rate is increased, there is inflammation. The C-reactive protein or CRP um, inflammation and infection will cause that to be higher. Other diagnosis, or excuse me, diagnostic assessments include joint changes per x-ray. They will do a CT scan to look at the cervical spine. And arthrocentesis is a needle aspiration. So if somebody has rheumatoid arthritis and they do this needle aspiration, they will see white blood cells, cloudiness, and an increased volume of fluids. Post care for that is um, ice for 24 hours, by the way. So they go down into the joint and take out um, joint synovial fluid, okay? So you can imagine that can be a little painful. We want to monitor the CBC for low hemoglobin, hematocrit, and red blood cells. Anemia is very common in people who have rheumatoid arthritis. Our hypotheses, chronic inflammation and persistent pain, potential for decreased mobility, and potential for decreased self-esteem. So managing chronic inflammation and pain, we use drug therapy. We have something called DMARDS. Um, if you look on page 1021, that stands for Disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. Okay, um, so this slows the progression of the rheumatoid arthritis. You have methotrexate. What you need to know about methotrexate is that strict birth control is needed. There is also liflunamide, which causes hair loss, and there is a drug alert on page 1021 that has to do with 
left lunar line, top right hand corner. It's so potent. Um, it's generally tolerated, but side effects are pretty rough. Hair loss, diarrhea, decreased white blood cells and platelets. So that means they would be more susceptible to infection um, or increase liver enzymes. So we want to teach patients that they've got to be under management, strict medical, medical management for their labs if they're on leflunamide. Hydroxychloroquine can cause retinal damage. There are biological response modifiers. We have to warn the patient that their immune system will um, decrease when they're on these. And then of course, steroids, anti-inflammatory, right? Complications of steroids long-term, diabetes, decreased immunity, hypertension, fluid and electrolyte imbalance, osteoporosis, and glaucoma. So we wanna promote mobility and enhance their self-esteem. Um, they, remember, have trouble with body image because of all the disfigurement that can happen um, and the, um, the pain and the swelling of the joints. So we want to uh, enhance their, their self-esteem by just letting them talk out their feelings and doing as much we, as we can to promote their um, ability to do ADLs independently as possible and their ability to be mobile um, as much as possible. Care coordination and transition management. For home care, if they are gonna need a wheelchair or a walker, they're gonna need ramps, wide doorways, handrails, they're gonna need an elevated toilet, um, countertops and appliances can be altered so that um, they're easier to reach, okay? There is a box on page 1024 that talks about energy conservation for the patient with arthritis, um, balance activity with rest, encourage them to take naps as much as they need to, they need to pace themselves, determine what activities are more important and do those first, delegate responsibilities as much as possible, plan ahead so they're not under a lot of stress and having to rush, and learn their activity tolerance and don't exceed it. And what do we want these patients to achieve? We want their pain level. Remember, they're not probably gonna be completely out of pain. So we want it to be a two to a three or what is acceptable to them. Um, we want them to be able to function as independently as possible with or without assistive devices. And we want them to have a positive perception of themselves. So we would like for them to verbalize an increase in self-esteem. So that's the end of our lecture, and you guys can go over the case study yourself. Thank you very much.